Now that you're able to recognize whether or not your bees have European or American fowl brood, let's talk about how to control it. We're going to talk about controlling European fowl brood first because it's the easier of the two to control. Now European fowl brood really can be controlled a couple of ways. First, because it is a bacterium, there are antibiotics that you can put into your colonies, the RIDDA colony of European fowl brood. And there are some non-chemical ways of controlling European fowl brood. First, the chemical way. Let's say you find European fowl brood in your colonies. You can treat with the antibiotics teramycin or Thailand in your colonies. Now this rids the colony of European fowl brood and the reason it does is because the antibiotics kill the vegetative state of the bacteria which is the only state that exists for European fowl brood. So you put the antibiotics in and the disease goes away. Now I typically don't tell people to do this so much because European fowl brood, being the type of disease it is, tends to clear up on its own. In fact, if a good honey flow is on the way, or if you feed your colony, or you add bees or brood, or you requeen your colony, colonies can push through the problem. I really want to stress that last point there, requeening your colony. Because if you have a colony that has European fowl brood, then it's obviously evident that your colony is, re is susceptible to the disease. Your queen is not resistant. She's producing offspring that get the problem. So I tell people requeen the colony in hopes of getting a queen whose offspring are resistant to the disease. But should you feel the need to treat with either teramycin or Thailand, you can treat it, but I want to stress that you must do it according to label. Remember, this is an antibiotic. It can show up in honey, and misuse can cause the bacterium to become resistant to the antibiotics. So you really want to follow the label. And because labels are always changing, I'm not going to give specific recommendations here, but rather refer you to the label. I do want to say though, labels typically permit you to use the antibiotics in uh, sugar syrup or powdered sugar or in patty form. Now my recommendation to you is if you elect to use the antibiotic is to put it in powdered sugar. This is the quickest way to get it into the colony. Bees feed on it quicker, they disperse it through the colony quicker, and it gets out faster. As such, it minimizes the chance that the bacteria in there are going to become resistant to the antibiotic. Leaving uh, the antibiotics in the sugar syrup or in the patty form keeps it in the colony longer, increasing the chances the bacteria can become quite resistant to that antibiotic. Now moving on to American fowl brood, you have the same modes of treatment available to you as you do for European fowl brood. If you find the disease, you could use the antibiotics, but there is a clear problem with this. Why? The antibiotics kill simply the vegetative state of the bacteria. What's left behind? That's right, the spore. As such, you can have a sick colony, you can put in antibiotics, but the American fowl brood vegetative state is going to die, but the spore is left behind. As such, you'll get rid of the symptoms, you think your colony's better, only two months later to find out that your colony has American fowl brood again. The kicker is, it never left in the first place. It was always there, you just killed the vegetative state, but the spore was lurking behind waiting for your colonies to be stressed. Because of that, the only true way to deal with American fowl brood with antibiotics is to treat prophylactically. This is something you don't have to do with European fowl brood. European fowl brood, you see it, you can treat. With American fowl brood, if you see it and treat, you're accomplishing nothing. So a lot of people take the prophylactic choice. In other words, you treat before you have the problem. If you're going to stay on top of American fowl brood this way, though, you need to treat in spring and in fall. The clear problem with treating with prophy uh, the prophylactic route is the antibiotics in there, it's in there regularly, and that increases the chance that the bacteria are going to become resistant to American fowl brood or to these antibiotics. And I want to stress this point significantly because they've already shown that there are some strains of American fowl brood that are resistant to the antibiotics. So keep that in mind when you're using that. Really, management of either disease, but particularly American fowl brood, boils down to resistant stock. I cannot stress enough, hygienic behavior, this behavior where bees can detect varroa mites and chalk brood, etc in cells and remove the affected brood really came as a result of scientists first discovering it with American fowl brood. So you can purchase bees that are resistant to American fowl brood. The queens will produce offspring, the offspring can detect 
the problems in the cells and remove it. And as such, you can keep the American fowl brood repressed or suppressed altogether and you never see it. Only when you get a susceptible strain in there is when you notice the problem. Because American fowl brood is such a significant issue, primarily because of the spore nature of the bacteria, the general recommendation is once you see it in your colonies, there's nothing you can do to rid your colony of American fowl brood. As such, you have to burn your equipment. We do not recommend taking the bees out, scorching the inside, and putting new bees in because there's no guarantee that you've gotten all the American fowl brood. Furthermore, if you use the bees in another colony, there's no guarantee that you've gotten rid of all the American fowl brood. So your state inspector, if your state has an inspector, will come to your colonies, find American fowl brood, and burn the colonies. That really is the only way to rid yourself of American fowl brood. However, I want to stress that both diseases are manageable. I tell you, before varroa mites and tracheal mites came to the United States, American fowl brood was the disease that everyone was concerned about. But now it's largely been eclipsed by varroa and tracheal. That just goes to show you that both diseases are manageable with a little bit of understanding of their biology, a little bit of understanding on how to diagnose it, and a lot of understanding on the adequate ways to control it. I hope with the information that I've discussed with you in this episode of a video field guide to beekeeping will make you a better beekeeper, will give you the hand up on trying to control fowl brew diseases in your colony. Thank you.